Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura, and I'm your uh, uh, host this uh, for the show. And I don't have a special guest because uh, I've uh, I'm I'm going to stand on my soapbox today and 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 talk to you about something that's kind of near and dear to my heart, mainly because I feel like I bear some responsibility for it because I was appointed to a task force uh, that worked on uh, drafting the uh, ordinance 18-4. That's the fire safety ordinance. And those of you who are you know, regular listeners to this um, two condo insider know that I've talked about this fire safety ordinance for a, a while. I've talked about it many times. Okay, but recently I was interviewed by Civil B. Uh, they ran an article that discussed uh, Hawaii's condominium maintenance fees and how they're the highest in the nation. Uh, and it, it may be because, you know, you know, we live in Hawaii and everything here is more expensive, uh, mainly because we live on an island and everything has to come to us. And that means that we have to pay extra. But, you know, that interview and you know the discussion we had on the show uh kind of revived a discussion about why we why do we even have this uh fire safety ordinance and maybe i mean and and we kind of know that it it's not working well because it's in the implementation of this law it was passed in 2018 and here it is 2022 uh, because of the pandemic, the deadlines in the ordinance were extended because, you know, people couldn't do inspections and people weren't working. And uh, and so they were having trouble making paying their maintenance fees. Uh, there were cash flow problems with the association because they're dealing with the challenges of repairing and maintaining older buildings that are 30, 40 years old and a myriad of other issues. And, and now on top of everything else, you have to deal with this um, fire safety ordinance. So anyway, you know, people have been asking me, why do we need this? And is there something we can do about it? And the answer is, yeah, we can repeal it. I mean, it got, it's harder to repeal. I grant you that it's much harder to repeal. Maybe it should never have been enacted, but who knew? Who knew back in 2017, 2018, that we were going to have this worldwide COVID-19 pandemic that would turn everything upside down and create economic havoc, you know, where people lost their jobs and and uh, the economy was disrupted. I mean, who, who, who knew back in 2017, 2018 that that would happen? Uh, I didn't. And now, now that I know, I'm, 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 I'm kind of, uh, I kind of regret that I was part of the process. But anyway, uh, that's why I'm I'm talking to you today about you know discussing why why we even have this and maybe it's time to think about repealing. And uh, but you know to, to just give you uh, some background, the fire safety ordinance 18 uh, 18-4 was enacted as a result as a response to the Marco Polo fire that happened in the summer of 2017. And uh, the original bill that was introduced by Mayor Kirk Caldwell provided that all high rise buildings that were over 10 stories and had, did not have uh, open exterior corridors were required to install fire sprinklers. That's, that was the original bill in a nutshell. And as a result, you had hundreds of condo owners showing up at City Hall, uh, objecting, testifying against this bill. Why? Because they felt that it was unfair uh, to impose this huge financial burden of put, you know, installing fire sprinklers is not cheap. The Marco Polo, to, which is probably the only one that I can think of that did the retrofitting, it cost them $5.4 million in, in 2021 dollars. 2020 and 2021 dollars. They, they flipped the switch in October of 2021 for their fire sprinklers. 
It cost them $5.4 million. The Marco Polo has almost 600 units. And you do the math for your building. So it's not cheap. And so, you know, back in uh, 2017 and 2018, when we were having hearings, when the city was having hearings on this, on, on this bill, I mean, you had condo owners protesting in City Hall. And one of the hearings happened just before Christmas. It went on for hours. And, um, and, 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 and the testimony was, this isn't fair. You know, where are we going to get the money? We're going to have to assess our owners. And, and, you know, we don't have $5 million to spend on fire sprinklers. We got old buildings. We have to worry about spalling and we have to uh, worry about railings and, uh, you know, fixing our elevators and other things that are safety, health and safety related. And so, you know, now you're you're burdening us with an additional expense of installing fire sprinklers. And we don't even have money in our reserves because it was never required before. And so um, so there was a huge protest and the city council set up a task force. I was one of the members. And so we tried to come up with an alternative to fire sprinklers. In other words, you had a choice. You could either do fire sprinklers or you could do something else. And the something else turned out to be something called life safety valuations, the kind of inspection. That's where you get, you know, a licensed professional to come into your building and they do an inspection and they 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 figure out that, you know, you have to, you know, your building is not, you know, quite safe. And most of these buildings are 30, 40 years old, you know, they're worn. And, you know, so if you had safety um, uh, features in, in, in the building, they're probably all worn out and have to be replaced or upgraded. And so, but the cost of upgrading those the, those um, uh, the, the 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 safety of the building and to install fire uh, equipment was a lot cheaper than putting in fire sprinklers. So we thought that that was an acceptable alternative. Uh, and then, so that passed. That passed. Uh, and at the time when we were doing this. The, the, we, the, the fire department made a list of all the high rise buildings that would be uh, subject to this law. And it was about 360, okay? And then from the 360 buildings, because the ordinance did not apply to buildings under 10 stories and buildings that had open exterior corridors, open exterior corridors means that when you come out of your building, there's air, you don't have, you don't have walled in corridors. And those buildings, were considered, you know, safer, even, and, and to give you an example, you don't have to be a small building to have open exterior quarters. The Yarn Harbor Tower, the Wailana, I think they're both over 20 stories. They have open exterior quarters. And, and so a lot of you uh, probably live in buildings, you know, that uh, have open exterior quarters. And that means that you would be exempt from fire sprinklers. You still have to pass the life safety evaluation. And you know the whole purpose of all of all of this is to make sure that the buildings are safe. And, and nobody, I don't think anybody objected to that. Uh, it's, it's just that this ordinance has deadlines, and and because of the pandemic, uh, the deadline for complying with uh, doing the life safety evaluation was extended twice. And I believe that the last deadline was August 31, uh, 2022, which was just a few weeks ago. And coincidentally. Uh, in, in August of 2022, the fire department uh, released a report, uh, released a report that said that 275 buildings, uh, associations in Honolulu had submitted life safety evaluations. And of the 275 buildings, 20 had passing scores. That meant that means there's 255 high-rise buildings in Honolulu that did not pass the life safety evaluation and have to do uh, additional installations. And, and the most popular one seems to be upgrading your fire alarm system, which requires a building permit. And the uh, building permits have to be issued by the Department of Planning and Permitting, DPP at uh, the city. And we all know that DPP is having its own problems. 
I mean, right now, I mean, in today's newspaper, the two top officials have resigned because they're not, they're not getting along with the mayor. Uh, they have staff shortages. Uh, some of their uh, inspectors and evaluators are facing criminal charges for taking bribes. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's a, there's, they, they have, this is a city department with a lot of issues. And now you've got 255 high rise buildings in Honolulu that didn't pass their life safety uh, evaluations that are going to need building permits. And guess what? Under the ordinance, we have three years. Those 255 buildings, they've got three years uh, to comply with the LSE, the Life Safety Evaluation. Uh, I think some of the buildings will be lucky if they get their building permits within that three-year period, much less comply with the, th the three-year deadline. So I'm pretty sure if we're going to keep this ordinance, we're going to have to go back and extend the deadline yet again, because there's no way the building, the DPP, uh, that's part of the city uh, agency is going to be able to issue building permits to 255 high rise buildings in Oahu so that they can comply with the LSE in the next three years. I mean, that's that's like impossible. Uh, it would be a miracle if that could happen. Uh, so, you know, so so now we've got, you know, we've got the, the pandemic, the pandemic result, the, the, the COVID uh pandemic resulted in lost jobs wages uh and and it and when things started to come back to normal you had supply chain problems and 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 all the costs of everything and uh, have gone up and you know this is just making everything worse and that's not only to comply with the ordinance but for just getting your ordinary stuff done for your buildings i mean i've been hearing hearing uh uh concerns from buildings saying, you know, we can't even get a building permit to do our regular stuff, our regular repair and maintenance. And now you're telling us we're going to have to get a, a permit so that we can comply with the life safety ordinance in three years. Give me a break. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, you know, so, you know, that part of it uh, is, is, is just unrealistic. We're going to have to go back and, and, uh, you know, if if if, the, if 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 we're going to uh, continue with this process, we're going to have to go back and amend the law yet again. And what we're finding out, and this has nothing to do with the fire safety ordinance, but in January one of twenty twenty two, the uh, insurance business uh, suffered some losses. I mean, they they, they suffered the losses in twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one, but in twenty twenty two, they raised the insurance on all high-rise buildings that did not have a fire sprinkler. And the buildings, their insurance premiums uh, increased by 30 to 40%. The insurance in my building on January 1, 2022, went up $45,000. And we didn't have the extra money in our budget. So we've been, you know, scrimping and saving, uh, you know, to just make it through this year. So I'm, and I've heard worse. I've heard some of the buildings had increases uh, of uh, over a hundred thousand, not covered by their budget. So now you're dealing. Now you have condominium associations and co-op associations dealing with trying to repair and maintain aging buildings, and uh, they've got increased insurance, and you have an ordinance that has these deadlines and the next deadline is three years to comply with your LSE uh, and we know that we have 255 buildings in Honolulu that need building permits that aren't going to get them so that they can com uh, comply with the statute uh, comply with the ordinance within the three years uh, remaining and you know and it just seems like and and you know the thing about the insurance which which is really galling because the it's the industry, it's the industry, insurance industry, they suffered losses, the reinsurance uh, industry suffered losses. And so our local carriers who rely on the uh, reinsurance companies, you know, to provide them with money to pay off claims, 
they had to raise their in, uh, insurance to us. And the ordinance specifically says that if you have, you are under 10 stories and uh, you have open exterior corridors, you're exempt for fire sprinklers. But yet the insurance commissioner allowed the insurance uh, companies, the reinsurance companies to raise their rates to the same buildings that are exempt. And to me, that's not fair, but you know, uh, that's what you know we are dealing with now. And, um, uh, you know, and one of the big things that, you know, the, one of the big complaints that I have, uh, you know, with all of these, um, with especially this fire safety ordinance, I call it an unfunded mandate. It's a law that mandates it's us, it's a condo and a co op owners uh, to do something. And that's to install a fire sprinkler or to comply and to spend money to comply with the life safety evaluation. But yet the city has not given us, they promised, they promised, you know, uh, you know, in, in the original bill that they would help us by, you know, providing some kind of uh, subsidy or even low interest loans uh, to help associations uh, deal with, uh, uh, you know, uh, finding the money uh, to pay, you know, for these uh, improvements to the building. But uh, neither the Caldwell administration or the current administration uh, has been moving to establish meaningful, you know, financial assistance, you know, by giving incentives, you know, uh, you know, like tax breaks uh, to go with the uh, mandate or to establish uh, low cost loans uh, where condo associate condo and uh, co-op associations can apply. Uh, for money uh, to help them comply with this ordinance. And uh, and on top of that, you know, all these high rise buildings with no sprinklers are facing skyrocketing uh, insurance premium costs. And, you know, uh, the Hawaii Council of Association of Apartment Owners did a study of other jurisdictions that have uh, mandatory fire sprinkler ordinances. And Honolulu is by far the largest municipality. And it's not states, they're, they're cities. And so Honolulu is the largest that we've been able to find. And none of the other municipalities are mandate, are, are enforcing the mandates. They're letting them happen voluntarily. And that is, you know, what you know I am suggesting. You know, rather than go back. And amend 18.4, ordinance 18.4, to extend the deadline so that we can, uh, have, so the buildings can comply with their LSC, is to you know allow. I mean, first of all, you know, it, this this uh, ordinance it just just seems so impossible uh, to uh, enforce. It's just it it's just you know uh, the, there's certain issues that were never contemplated. It, you know, at the time uh, we were uh, working on uh, drafting it. And now it's come to the implementation and it seems like every time you turn around, there are roadblocks or obstacles to compliance. Uh, and one of the uh, obstacles is money. Where's the money? And, um, you know, so, you know, so I think it's time to consider uh, maybe repealing this ordinance. And you ask me, how do we do that? And my answer to you is, you gotta tell your council members. There are nine people who sit on the city council. And I think we're gonna be scrolling. Um, there they are. Those are the nine people. And there's the link. And if you go to that link, that's www.honoluluCityCouncil.org backslash council members at the bottom of the page. If you don't know who your council member is, there's a box right there that says, um, not sure who represents you on the council. Look at, my, and then you click on that box and it will tell you. You tell them where you live and it will tell you who your council member is. And so it's up to you to tell your council member that you would like their help in repealing this law. 
that is creating because you as a member as a condo owner you're going to pay, be paying for this because any installation is going to come out of increased maintenance fees or special assessments and that means it's coming out of your pocket and if you're having trouble paying your bills meeting your financial obligations it's the last thing you need is a special assessment or increased maintenance fees uh, to pay, you know, for, to comply with this ordinance. And, or, you know, in, in, we don't have to do a total repeal. We can just do a modification of the ordinance to make it, to take away the deadlines because the deadlines we know now, we know now are terribly unrealistic. Nobody is going to be able to comply, especially the city, uh, the city who issues the building permits that we need to do the installations. There's no way the city is going to be able to issue a building permits for 255 buildings in the city and county of Honolulu so that they can get there, so that they can comply with the ordinance uh, in three years from August 31, 2022. That's August 31, 2025. You have to be in compliance. And, you know, so, you know, for those of you who have concerns, if you, you know, if you don't sit on a board, uh, you can still call your council member because you're a taxpayer and you're going to be affected by this ordinance if, if the city council doesn't change it. And all we need is five members of the city council to repeal it. And one of the members is, is somebody that I'm talking to. I'm not going to reveal that council member's name, but that council member has uh indicated that uh they will prepare a bill to repeal ordinance 18-4 all we need is the will is is for the uh constituents that means all of you guys out there to pick up the phone call your council member or go to that website find out what their email address is and send them an email please 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 repeal ordinance 18-4, the fire safety ordinance. That's all we want. We want messages to go to the council member to tell them that that's what, uh, uh, you know, condo owners and co-op owners uh, would like them to do. And 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 uh, we, we will probably have the, uh, have the council member introduce the bill. It has to go through three readings, which means it has to have three different public hearings where you can testify and you can go online and submit testimony uh, or, or you can you know, show up. And I think they're allowing in-person testimony so you could go to City Hall or they're using, I think they're using Zoom, but they, but they, are, uh, they, they are allowing uh, remote participation and you can go on this, uh, the city website and they will tell you how to participate in a hearing by submitting testimony or even just, you know, showing up on their uh, uh, Zoom or go to meeting. I can't remember what platform they're using, but they do allow remote testimony. And, and you know, you just need to tell your story that you're a condo owner. Uh, you live in a condo that's subject to the ordinance and you know that you have three years to comply. You know that the uh, the fire department issued a report in August of uh, 2022 that says there's 255 buildings in Honolulu that have not complied with the life safety evaluation. They need building permits. There's no way the city's going to do it. And even if they could, you can't afford it. And so what you need from them is their vote, their political willingness to help you, the, their constituent, uh, to get rid of this ordinance that is causing uh, such hardship to uh, so many uh, condo owners. And again, that um, link is www.honoluluCityCouncil.org backslash council members. There it is on the screen right now. That's where you go. That's who you talk to. Uh, and 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 when you call them, their will their staff. I mean, they have paid staff, and the only job the staff has 
is to talk to constituents and to deal with constituent concerns. So I guarantee you, if you call or contact your council member, once you find out who they are and, and, and just say, I, you know, I'm a constituent and I have a concern and you tell them the concern, give it to them really quick. You know, you, there's an ordinance, 18-4, it's a fire safety ordinance. I live in a condo and, you know, we can't afford to put in these things uh, to put in the fire safety uh, uh, in installations. And it's gonna cost us an arm and a leg. We can't do fire sprinklers uh, because we have to do special assessments. And we just don't, we, we just can't afford it. And we would appreciate it if you would help us repeal this ordinance. That's all you have to say. Or you don't have to say all of that. Just say 18-4. Can you help us repeal it? Because they'll look it up. They know, they understand that shorthand. So they, they will understand. So if you tell them that you would like their help in getting 18-4 repealed, they will know what you're talking about. And if enough people call their council members, uh, they will talk to each other and word will get out and say, hey, you know, I'm getting all these calls about 18-4 and we got to do something because, you know, I'm up for election and I need their votes or I'm going to run for another office and I want them to vote for me. I want these people to vote for me. And so, yeah, your voice matters. So, you know, please, 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 if um, you're concerned about this, that's how you fix it. You call, you, 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 you go to that website, figure out who your council member is, give them a call, ask them to help you by repealing 18, ordinance 18-4. Okay, now I'm gonna get off my soapbox. And I wanna thank you, you know, for being with us for this uh, episode of Condo Insider. And I want you to uh, join us next week uh, when it will be Raylene Tenno, and she'll uh, have another very hopeful, hopeful, interesting show uh, for you about condo living uh, and uh, you know dealing with condo issues. So thank you for joining me uh, today. Mahalo and aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.